Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, today we will go ahead and proceed from Canto number 7, Chapter 5, from verse 33 to 35. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, my obeisances to all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Can we make the screen bigger? Let's see. A little bigger. Huh? Yeah. Screen is only a small part of the whole thing there. Let's see. I'm trying to make it. Can you make it a little bigger? Is that possible? Mm -hmm. From your side? Let me see what my Is it big enough now, Maharaj? Full screen. Okay, I don't know if that's the if that's gonna work. All right, that's as best as we can do it, I think. Om the Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Eat Yukto Padatam Putram. Hiranyakashi Purusa. Andikritatmad Sotsangan. Nirayasta Mahitale. Translation. After the Lord Maharaj has spoken in this way and became silent, Rani Kashipu, blinded by anger, threw him off his lap and onto the ground. Text 34. Aham marsam rusa vista kasai bhutalochanaha yadyatam asvayam badyo. Translation, indignant and angry, his reddish eyes like molten copper, Rani Kashipu said to his servants, O demons, take this boy away from me. He deserved to be killed. Kill him as soon as possible. Next 35. I am a bartrir ha so yam hit for swam surado damaha pitrivya hantupa do yo vishnur dasa vat archati. Translation This boy, Prahlad, is the killer of my brother, for he has given up his family to engage in the devotional service of the enemy, Lord Vishnu, like a menial servant. Purport. Rani Kashipu considered his son, Prahlad Maharaj, to be the killer of his brother because Prahlad Maharaj was engaged in devotional service of Lord Vishnu. In other words, Prahlad Maharaj would be elevated to Sarupya liberation, and in that sense, he resembled Lord Vishnu. Therefore, Prahlad was to be killed by Hirani Kashipu. Devotees, Vaishnavas, attained the liberation of Sarupya, Salokya, Sarsti, and Samipya, whereas the Mayavadis are supposed to attain the liberation known as Sahuja. Suhuja Mukti, however, is not very secure, whereas Surupya Mukti, Salokya Mukti, Sharsya Mukti, and Samipya Mukti are most certain. Although the servants of Lord Vishnu Narayan and the Vaikuntha planets are equally situated with the Lord, the devotees there know very well that the Lord is the master, whereas they are the servants. Magyan Timiranda Syad Ginajana Salakaya Chakshun Militam Yena Tasmain Sri Gurvena Maha.
Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Vebhacha Itanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare mm. So the demons of course, here we have the best of all demons, Harani Kashipu. His, his will is never thwarted. You know, he's so materially powerful that whatever he wants, he gets. And he has so many benedictions in order to further his demoniac activities even against the laws of material nature. But here we have an interesting situation, a unique situation, not so unique, but interesting in the sense that it is uh, describing how such a powerful personality, no one would even dare to even think different than him because they were afraid of the reaction. His son, five-year-old boy, great devotee of the Lord, born as a Vaishnava from the very beginning of his appearance in the world, is preaching to his father what is devotional service and how wasting his time as a demon, he's, uh, it's, not even, it's not beneficial for him either. He's, uh, he wants to help his father. <laughs> He knows that demoniac life, being against the, the principles of, of eternal religion and the activities of the demig demons are destructive, even for the person. Simply to abide by, follow, and serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he understands by his own realization, not because he's read so many books not because he has has so many persons tell him that. No, he understands by his own experience that to worship the Supreme Lord is the perfection of life and also the goal of life, of course, also. And it is the, it is the ultimate principle of happiness and transcendental knowledge. So he wants to give it to his father also. <laughs> he... It's not that because his father is a demon and he's a devotee, he dislikes his father. He actually has love for his father. And in that mood, he wants to awaken his father to what is the best, a best way to live life, become a devout devotee of the Lord. But Rani Gashipu won't hear any of that. The demons are like that. They don't. Prabhupada said the demons are, are so cruel that they will do anything just to fulfill their desires, their lusty desires, their greedy desires. They'll do anything. Here he's ordering his servants to kill the boy. I mean, that's his son. So he has no compunction, no compassion, no concern. Even his son, that he'll kill if he go if he goes against him. If you study, or just not so so much study, but if we hear about how the demons in the past act, you understand that. Prabhupada's statement, he said it. He said the demons will do anything; they will do anything. That means they'll kill anybody: their mother, their father, everybody, anyone. We have examples in history of uh, Aranzab. He was so greedy 
that uh, he, he killed his brothers and he took his father and put him in jail because he wanted to be the ruler. He wanted to be the king. And so these are the activities of the demons. But Pallad, he doesn't stop him from preaching. He knows that whatever I can do to awaken my dear father, he used to call him Asurya Bhajya. He would refer to him in that way. Oh, best of the demons. <laughs> He even glorified him in his position as being not only a demon, but the best of all demons. <laughs> and so he wasn't being sarcastic. He was just saying, yes, you're a demon, but not only you're a demon, but you're the best one. <laughs> all the other demons follow you. <laughs> so in that sense, he's giving him some respect, <laughs> according to Harani Kashibu. The position. But here, a Vaishnava, and we have one here that Prahlad Maharaj, he is not, he's fearless. Avayam, Bayam, everyone in the material world, everyone, Prabhupada would say, there's no one in the material world who's not, does not have some fear. Everyone in the material world, whoever they are, whatever they are, they have some element of fear. But one who takes the devotional service and absorbs himself in that devotional service, becomes purified by that devotional service, they're fearless. They have no fear. They're not foolish, but they do things just to test their fearful fearlessness. No. But they're not because they know they're always with the Lord and they're always protected by the Lord. So they have no fear. And Prahlad Maharaj is like that. And so here, uh, Prabhupada wants to make a point that Prahlad, Prahlad Maharaj is similar to Lord Vishnu. The word sarupya means form. And there is a type of liberation that one achieves where they get the same form as the Lord. It says here in the very end of the purport, Although there are many personalities who are devotees of the Lord, who worship the Lord in the spiritual world, who look just exactly like the Lord, they still know their position as being servants of the real Lord. Um, but that's one of the forms of, there's four that mention here. Sarshti means the same opulence of the Lord. Salokya means take birth on the same planet of the Lord. Samipya means to have the personal association of the Lord. And Sarupya means to have the same form as the Lord. These are all forms of liberation that Vaishnavas can achieve through the process of pure devotional service. And so Pallad Maharaj is so great that he will attain when he becomes free, when he becomes liberated, he will actually attain Surupya Mukti, the same form as the Lord. The difference is it's mentioned in the Shastras is that the Lord carries with him a, his weapons. This is Lord Vishnu in the, in the Vaikuntha planet. And he has a particular marking on his chest uh, that is the, um, it's a golden hair. It indicates uh, Lakshmi Devi and sits on his chest. It's one of his signs uh, that he is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So there is some distinction, although there are, everyone looks like the Lord. But, but the main point here is Prahlad Maharaj is fearless. So when one takes the devotional service, they actually st start to connect with and associate with the Lord regularly, and they become fearless. They're not afraid of the material energy. They're not afraid to act as devotees. Sometimes we see um, a person will become a devotee 
and their parents, family members, and others will be against it and even sometimes try to stop them. But they will continue and do that. They will continue to worship the Lord. They're not afraid. They may be ridiculed. They may even be ousted from the family. They may even be restricted in certain ways because of their worship, but they don't care because they actually feel sorry for and compassion towards others who are not devotees because they know that to become a devotee, there is nothing greater. One can achieve, one can achieve so many things in this world one can even be the king, the emperor of the entire world, but that 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 can't even closely compare to the glory of becoming a devotee of the Lord. What is the emperor of the world? Even if he was the emperor of the universe, still the supreme personality of Godhead is the source and the power within of all of creation, both material and spiritual. When one becomes a devotee of the Supreme Lord, all of the mercy and many of the opulences, powers, and facilities that are enjoyed by the Lord are also given to the devotee of the Lord. The devotee has no anxiety. The devotee has no personal wants for their own needs because Krishna takes care of them. And they're happy. And what is their happiness? If they're asked to, to take some material benedictions, just like we had one devotee in our movement in this con, his father was a high court judge, and this was back in the 1970s. And his father was actually a millionaire. So when his son was about to join the Hare Krishna movement, he wanted to stop him, and so he offered him a million dollars. I'll give you $1 million. And that was, that was in the 1970s. So that was like more than 50 years ago. A million dollars now is not the same value as it was then. To have to be to have a million dollars then, you were, you're on the top of the economic uh, ladder. But he refused because he had to understand what is this, this money compared to be worshiping the Supreme Lord there's no comparison. So he refused. And he joined many years later when he was staying in India. His parents, his father and mother, came to see him. And his father spoke to Prabhupada directly and said, I will give you, I will give you a million dollars if you send my son back to me to become, you know, you know, back into the family. Prabhupada said, you have to ask him. I, I can't. Prabhupada wasn't going to say anything. He, he said, you have to ask him. And of course, he refused again for the second time. So a devotee knows, what is this, this procunary gain? It is nothing. It has no value in comparison. It's the lowest form of wealth. If you look at wealth in its different stages, um, the scriptures describe wealth in different four stages. One, the lowest stage is money or financial gain. Higher than that is knowledge. Knowledge is greater because if you have knowledge, you actually you can free yourself from all of the difficulties that come by way of living in this material world. Higher than knowledge is austerity because austerity leads one to the platform of pure devotional service. And the highest form of wealth is bhakti. Bhakti is so great that it actually controls Krishna. There are three things. There's bhakti, devotion to Krishna. There is Bhagavan, Krishna himself. And there is bhakta, the devotee. A, dev a devotee who has bhakti, suda bhakti, pure bhakti, can control Bhagavan, who is the controller of everyone. It says Ishwara Parma Krishna. Uh, it's, I mean, it says as uh, Asabrita. Um, uh, 
Krishna is, there's no one greater than that, or what is it, Nityam Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam Echo Vahunam Viradati Kaman. He is the supreme eternal, which is maintaining all of the other eternals, that's us. And there's no one greater there, or no one equal to him. He is supreme in all categories of existence. And so, one who is connected with devotional good Krishna is the best of all persons, because Krishna is the best of all living beings in existence. He is the source of everything. So to take the devotional service is not a small thing. To get the opportunity to engage in devotional service is a great privilege. And one who takes advantage of that, their life is perfect. And then as they continue to perform their devotional service, they develop all good qualities, kindness, compassion, fearlessness, uh, freedom from various types of material uh, dualities. The, whole, the list goes on and on and on of all of the good qualities. If you read the first three verses, in the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes the 20, I think it's 28, quali 29 qualities of a Vaishnava. And then he also mentions other places, there are 26 qualities of a Vaishnava. So the devotee is the best of all persons. And a devotee sees the people who are in this material world, even though they're very nicely situated materially, they may have a nice family by material standards, a nice position, enough wealth to keep them, you know, what we say, active in all areas. Still, a devotee looks at them and says, Poor fellow, he's suffering so much. <laughs> because one who one who is a devotee understands there's nothing greater, nothing more desirable, nothing more perfect than to engage in the loving service of the Lord. It's the constitutional, eternal position of the living entity to love and serve the Lord. So one who actually takes up devotional service seriously not whimsically or what we say mechanically, haphazardly, or whatever I have time to kind of, no, one who seriously takes up this process of devotional service, sravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam, one who hears and chants the glories of the Lord, associates with and serves other Vaishnavas, worships the Lord at his deity form, gains transcendental knowledge by hearing from the great souls along with reading from scriptures such as Bhagavad Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and eats only Krishna Prashadam. That person is living the, the perfection of life and when they die, Taktva De Hampurna Jan Mani Maiti Krishna personally takes them back to his his spiritual abode far beyond this material world. <clears throat> so therefore, a devotee has no fear because they're always connected with Krishna. And even if they have some, they have to undergo some personal difficulty, they don't mind because they know it'll pass. It is simply something that it comes and it goes in due course of time. And they stay fixed in their devotional service of the Lord. Sometimes people who take up Krishna consciousness, when they see their material life being threatened by their spiritual advancement, they get a little worried. They think I shouldn't make I shouldn't be too become too Krishna conscious. It's dangerous. What will happen to my material life? What will happen to my position? What will happen to all of my friends? They uh, start to think in this uh, what we say this illusionary way that. The material life is better than spiritual life. But material life is ephemeral. It's, ex it's external. It has nothing to do with the soul's existence. Because we have a material body, we have a material activities. But because we are spiritual by nature, our activities, when engaged in, in devotional service, go directly to the heart, to the soul, and awaken our realization of our, our relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Prahlad Maharaj, he's not 
fearful at all, then you'll see as, it, as the chapters continue to unfold, his father will do everything to try to kill him, but nothing works. Rake Krishna more ke, more Krishna rake ke. That if Krishna wants to protect someone, there's no power in existence that can do anything, even harm a hair on that person's body. And if Krishna doesn't want to protect someone, even if that person is surrounded by armies, bodyguards, security locks, <laughs> various types of fortresses, still they're they're vulnerable, they're vulnerable to be destroyed. So everything depends on a relationship with the Lord, and that is the success. So Prahlad Maharaj he knows that, and he's willing. He's not willing to give up his uh, his position as a devotee simply because of being threatened by his father. He knows the Lord will protect him. And he takes full shelter of the Lord. In fact, he's so compassionate. And there's one particular uh, episode where when Harani Kashipu tried in different ways to kill him, this is not mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's mentioned in another scripture called Hari Bhakti Sudodaya, which also describes the life of Prahlad. In there, it describes that Harani Kashipu sent him to a series of tantric brahmins. And these brahmins could chant mantras, and then they were so powerful that these mantras could kill a person simply by the chanting of these mantras. Mantra is another type of weapon can be used as a weapon on the subtle plane to kill people. There are left-wing mantras, uh, tantras or mantras, and there are right wing various kinds. Of course, we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That mantra elevates our consciousness to the spiritual world. The power of mantra is like that. But there are negative mantras that are used by demoniac persons to kill other people. So these Brahmins tried to kill Prahlad. They surrounded him, a group of them, and started chanting mantras. But Prahlad was so absorbed in thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord that none of the mantras had any effect. And what happened was, when someone releases these mantras, they have to go somewhere. So they weren't able to do anything to Prahlad. So these mantras were going back to the brahmanas, and the brahmanas were starting to die from their own mantras. And they were actually being killed by their mantras, which were coming back to them. They started to pray to Prahlad, 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 we're dying, we're dying, save us. They took shelter of Prahlad. This is described. And Prahlad, he had the power, and he withdrew the power of the mantras, and uh, they were saved. He had no vengeance against those who tried to kill him. Because the Vaishnav is like that. The Vaishnav has no enemy, but others will make the Vaishnav an enemy, but the Vaishnav doesn't make anyone his enemy because he doesn't see anyone as an enemy. He sees everyone as a spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna, who is a candidate to receive the mercy of the Lord. And that's the quality of a great soul. And Prahlad Maharaj is one of the greatest of all uh, personalities as we read in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada himself, he spoke more about Sri Prahlad than any other section of the Bhagavatam. He spoke at least three different times, series of different verses on Prahlad Maharaj. Prabhupada really loved to glorify Prahlad Maharaj. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was Krishna himself, he would listen to the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj spoken by Gadadhar Pandit. And Gadadhar Pandit would read from the Bhagavatam the whole story of Prahlad Maharaj. And then after Gadadhar Pandit would finish, Lord Chaitanya would say, read it again. <laughs> and then Gadadhar would read it again. And then the Lord would say, Read it again. 
Vrindavan Das Thakur, the author of Chaitanya Bhagwat, The Life of Lord Chaitanya, he says that Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, would request Gadahar Pandit to read these, this narration of Prahlad Maharaj up to a hundred times. He loved to hear about the activities of this five-year-old boy who was a pure devotee of the Lord, who not only uh, was completely uh, absorbed in the Lord, but he, even after his father was killed, he was only, he was concerned that his father received liberation. He asked his father, I'm, I'm sorry, he asked, he asked, uh, uh, he asked Nishringadev, can you liberate my father? When Nishringadev wanted to give him a benediction, he said, that's already done. <laughs> As soon as he was killed, he, he attained liberation. So this is the quality of a Vaishnava. They have no enmity or enmity towards anyone. And at the same time, they are always the well-wisher of all, no matter who that person may be. So that's Prahlad Maharaj. We, we can't glorify his quality of devotion enough because... It is exemplary. He is one of the greatest. And he is a Mahajan. Mahajano Yenakata Sapanta. He teaches the pras, He teaches the principle of pure devotional service. There are 12 personalities who are designated. Who have the qualifications to teach the path of bhakti. And Prahlad Maharaj is one of them. He is such a glorious personality. Only five years old too. You can see this is the power of bhakti. Can reach down even to we even see even seen today in our Krishna conscious movement some of these younger children who are taking part in this program some of them are really quite devoted and many of them even know the scriptures um, I've seen seven year old boys give Bhagavad Gita classes <laughs> I've seen boy boys six years old chanting various mantras from the from the Vedas. <laughs> So yeah, this is the power of bhakti. It glorifies the Lord, it glorifies the devotee. So one who takes the devotional service is intelligent and under, understands their own good, their own best interests. One who fails to take the devotional service or thinks that, that devotional service is just another feature of life uh, doesn't understand their own best interests. Because devotional service is far way beyond anything in this material world. It is the internal energy of Krishna himself. And it's personified by Srimati Radharani. She is Bhakti Devi. She is the orchestration of pure devotional service. And her devotion to Krishna is beyond description. So, yeah. So take the devotional service hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and engage in practical devotional service. And you'll only find uh, success and happiness on all levels of existence. You may get resistance from friends, family members, and society in general. And that's just natural because people, um, they don't understand. They can't understand. You can't understand something that you don't know of. It's like when you try to understand a person simply by looking at them or somebody tells you one thing about them and then you think you understand the person, but you can't, not by one little. So no one can understand the pure devotional service unless they hear from the great souls in a, in a way to accept whatever they say or unless they practice devotional service. It is, it is the jewel, it is called it is called um, Purusharta Siromani. There are four Purushartas in the world. That is called Dharma, Paris activities, Artha, economic development, Kama, the facilities to enjoy in this world, and Moksha, liberation from the cycle of birth and death. But there's a fifth Purusharta, and that's called Purusharta Siromani. Siromani means that the best of all or the jewel of all activities is devotional service. 
So one who takes the devotional service is very fortunate and they can make others also fortunate. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Please, please accept my humble obeisances. Um, as you said, Maharaj, you were just spot on. Uh, the main idea that I get from the class is that um, become serious in devotional service. But I think, I, I don't know about others, but I just take it as another feature of life, as you just said. Even though, despite we know that this is the main, despite we know that death is arriving, this, despite we know everything, we hear every day, yet we forget. I don't know, we get, I, I forget. And, it, and I'd still, as you said, don't take it just as another feature of life. How can we, how can we get the determination to become really serious? By associating with great souls, one starts to develop the same qualities that they have. When you hear from great souls, when you serve great souls, when you read about the Lord and the great souls, then you start to awaken that good fortune. As it says in Lord Chaitanya's Shikshastakam, Chaito Darpana Marjanam Bhava Mahadevagni Nevam Shreya Kaiva Vichendrika Vitaranam. Shreya means auspicious. There's nothing more auspicious than devotional service, especially centered around glorifying the Lord by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. There is a taste to that. It's a sweet taste. So if we give it a chance, we can develop that sweet taste. It's not, it cannot be compared to anything in this material world. <laughs> so, yeah, but it all develops by subtle sangha. <clears throat> association. So, Maharaj, when are you coming here? When can I get your association? Well, I don't know. I'm, there are so many great souls to associate with right now, right where you are. <laughs> right, 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 right. Thank you, Maharaj. What a wonderful class. Thank you so much for such a nectarian class. I really loved when you you were talking about the, the four levels. You know, the, the very bottom is money and then is knowledge, then is austerity, and then you get the highest phase, which is the biggest wealth, that is devotion. Thank you. Please bless us so we can all become a little bit more devotional towards our life. Thank you, Maharaj. Devotees, please feel free to unmute yourself. Feel free to Put your cameras on. Please feel free to raise your hand and ask any question that you might have for Maharaj. He's right here now. have uh, Hemi Mataji. Mataji, would you like to go ahead with your question, Mata? Yeah. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you for the opportunity. Dhanwar Pranam, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, I just wanted to know how can we practice uh, Smaranam? How can we what? Mm -hmm. How can we learn to practice Smaranam? Smaranam comes through Shravanam Kirtanam. When you practice Shravanam enough, it comes to Kirtanam. As Kirtanam develops, it enters into the mood of Smarnam. And then there's five levels of Smarnam as described, different intensifications of memory. And to remember Krishna always is the perfection of, of Bhakti. So when you, ch when you hear about the Lord, when you continue to hear, then after some time you feel inspired to speak. When hearing develops to a certain level, there is this desire starts to arise to, to, to glorify, to speak about the Lord. As that glorification comes, then it intensifies and then smartum 
also increases. And then, then it becomes easier and more natural to remember the Lord and remember the principles of devotional service. And so smarnam is perfection, actually. Another way to develop smarnam is, is to automatically just start speaking about the Lord. Even right where you are in your present position, just start to speak about the Lord. Talk to others. And, there is an, a particular, um, well, we can say, what is it? There was a a poll taken in the United States on 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 the principles of remembrance, and it started by saying people generally remember five percent, no, ten percent of what they hear. They generally remember 10% of what they hear. So not so very much. 20% of what they see. Uh, they remember 50% of what they see and hear together. And when you combine audio and visual, you can, your memory goes up to 50%. Um, and then people remember 70% of what they do. And they remember 90% of what they teach. <laughs> so when you speak, or if you're teaching others, your memory becomes strong. That's why to become, to preach or to speak about Krishna is the best, best form of service because you benefit just as much as the people who hear from you. <laughs> Even more. So talk about Krishna, talk about devotional service. These things are the essence of all topics. And if we practice that more and more, our memory becomes stronger and stronger. Thank you, Maharaj. That's very helpful. Thank you. Don't wait for now. Very well. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful answer. Radha Shakti Mataji, would you like would to, you like to push? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Dhanat Pranam. Maharaj. You look... Are you cold? Uh, no, Maharaj, I'm fine. Yeah, okay, where are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm in Canada, Ottawa. Oh, it must be cold there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I'm, yeah, okay. Just as long as you're okay. <laughs> Good. Maharaj, my question is, uh, sometimes we in the morning when we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra after, right after Mangala Arati, sometimes we get service in the temple. And at that time, I feel like I'm not, I will not be able to chant, but like I have some service to do. Then later on when I come home, I have some other work to do. So I'm not able to uh, chant properly my 16 rounds that day then I, I whenever I get the time during afternoon then I chant my rounds so in that case what do you think what, how should I motivate myself to uh, to chant the same way that I chant in the morning also during the afternoon it's a little more harder since the day's activities are already going on <clears throat> uh, that's why it's it's mentioned it's conducive to perform sadhana in the early morning hours, which is the time for meditation, the time for prayer. Prayer means chanting. Time for worship. So um, if you are able to arrange your schedule in such a way as that you can maximize your early time and at least get at least 12 of your 16 rounds done, early, and then you can do those other four sometime before lunch or something like that. I chant 16 rounds before I do anything. My phone is off. <laughs> I don't talk to anybody. Don't try to talk to me. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm like, I'm non-existent. In that I, just, I just chant my 16 rounds. I don't want to be bothered. So I've been making that a habit for years now, and I find the Krishna consciousness becomes better and better. So these early, early morning japa is really, really the best part of, of japa. 
and you can focus and you can you can push all of the other activities aside. So sometimes you might have to, you know, say, well, if if you're asked to do service in, in the temple in the morning, you might say, well, today I want to chant my rounds or something. You know, you have to somehow or other work in such a way as you put it into your schedule and the best you can. Otherwise, if you if you're relegated to chanting late and there's nothing else you can do about it, then you have to do the same thing. You have to go and close the doors, you know, put down the shades and just chant. Because as the day goes on, it becomes more and more a <clears throat> feature of doing things. That's why the, the modes of material nature align themselves with different parts of the day. From 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. is the mode of goodness. From 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. is the mode of passion. From 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. is the mode of ignorance. So these modes have more of an effect at that particular time. So we want to chant usually in the early morning hours when the mode of goodness is more prominent within the atmosphere. Thank you, Maharaj. You said something very wonderful. Put the shades down, close the door window, so to give the atmosphere to trick the mind to think that it's still early morning. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. Yes, thank you. Very nice, nice point. Yeah, nice interpretation. <laughs> because we have to trick the mind always to, you know, it, it, because it plays its own game. Well, you have to just focus the mind on... Mm -hmm. Um, devotion is not cannot be mixed with other activities. It has to be focused. Wonderful. Thank you, Radha Mataji, for your nice question. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Did that, for your did that help at all? Radha Shakti, did, did that help? Yes, yes, Maharaj. That definitely helped. Thank you. Please give me your blessings to advance in devotional service. Pray to Krishna, say, say my dear Lord, I'm going to chant early. Please help me. <laughs> and you'll get some mercy. If you, if you sincerely pray, you will get mercy. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Bhikkhu Prabhuji, would you like to ask your question, Prabhu? Yes, uh, thank you, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. Thank you for opportunity to ask you something which uh, my wife mentioned also. Hare Krishna, please accept our Dandvat pranams, Maharaj. Uh, during the class, you mentioned about a young person uh, who, who refused a million dollars, which is a lot of money in the 70s. And I've heard young people, like you mentioned, that uh, can narrate all the 700 verses of Gita or do Krishna Katha. So is, is this a kind of, my question is, is it something to do with past yes. karmic benefit? Is it something to do with is being carried forward by such a young soul or young person? Or, or in the case of the millionaire, why does he refuse? Is it to do with his previous sadhana? That's the question, Maharaj. Thank you. Well, to answer that, I would say anybody can do it. <laughs> oh. If you have the desire, you can do it. If you focus and you work at it, you can develop it. There might be persons who are more inclined to it due to past activities, but it's not relegated just to them. It's because it's part of devotional service, it can be done. You just have to practice. The, the, the course, the more you grow up in the atmosphere of you know, piety and devotion, the more your mind is less affected by distractions. 
Nowadays, the young people are so distracted because we have so many uh, means to get distracted nowadays, all by this technological uh, you know, advancement of society. There's so many ways. The people's minds are always, are always doing something all the day, 24 hours a day. Computers, cell phones, and various types of other forms of entertainment that got videos. And, and we find that young people nowadays who join the movement have a difficulty uh, focusing, especially those who grew up in Western countries because of their early exposure to a lot of sense gratification. But still, they can succeed too if they apply themselves with determination. So I wouldn't say it's relegated to a certain sector of people who are who have piety, piety or sukritis from past lives. Can be, if we do that, then we're minimizing the process of devotional service and relegating it to, a, to certain types of people where devotional service is available for any living entity. There's even examples where a dog became Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. Lord Chaitanya made... Two dogs, Krishna conscious. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I take the point very well, Maharaj. In fact, uh, very humbly I can say that we both are latecomers and learners uh, still in the path of Krishna consciousness, but the resolution or, uh, you know, what you mentioned, that it's for anyone if the desire is strong. And I appreciate and thank you for your uh, comments. Make your desire strong and get and get good association. And then, you're, then you are in the best position to succeed. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Shukakar Prabhuji, please go ahead with your question, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Nina Chakravarti Mate Dabrapalam. Hare Krishna, Chandra Mollify Maharaj, please accept my blessful obeisance to your lotus feet. All goes for Prabhupada, all goes to Chandra Molly Maharaj ki Jai Ho. Maharaj, the lecture was so wonderful and I was listening completely. I want to know one thing, how to get rid of the anartha nivritti. So a lot of things we are doing, sometimes the intentions are not proper and sometimes this duplicity comes. We talk something, but there is something in the inside. How to make it simple living and high thinking, which Sila Prabhupada always quotes. Can you just give some idea? Instead of preaching, chanting, there's something always, something is going wrong somewhere. But we want to cover it up. We want to have the good name. So then, these are all, so, these are all symptoms of material attachments. That's all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Sarva Upadi Vinod Muktam, how to get it? Well, that's what the name of Nirmalam, Rishikena Rishikesh is saving a Bhakti Uttamam. Yeah. By, through the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, you purify. The, the consciousness. Um, that means we still are still struggling with on that level of an art and nivriti. We still have material attachments, material desires. We're practicing bhakti, but it, still these things are still there to a certain degree. But it's like, you know, when you get into the shower, it doesn't mean as soon as you turn on the water, you're clean. You know, you have to go through the whole shower and then you're clean. So it, bhakti takes time to develop and there's different stages of realization. In other words, at different 
stages of your practice of Krishna consciousness, you start to rid yourself of these anarthas. And uh, if you have like, well, well, as you described that you have, you say one thing, but you have another intention that's in the background there. And this is a sign of duplicity. Duplicity is a element of the of the feature of the mode of ignorance. I'm sorry, the mode of the mode of passion. Uh, want to present themselves as being something different than who they really are. Yes. So we should we have to practice the process and know that in due course of time, if we continue to practice, all of these shadow uh, desires which are there due to our association with the material energy will gradually reduce in intensity and eventually will become free from all of these things. Then we then we have what is called uh, uh, Drita Vrata. One becomes fixed in the process of devotional service. What is that verse from the Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter? Um, yeah. What is, what is that? What is the whole verse? Do you remember? Mm. I think it's uh, Bhagavad Gita 728. Yesam pa pam gyananam purna karmanam tve danda moha nirmukta vajanti mantrata. Persons who have acted piously in previous life and in this life and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated, are free from the dualities of illusion, and they engage themselves in my service with determination. So Krishna makes it clear <clears throat> that, you know, it's a process. <laughs> it doesn't happen automatically. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Seek, you, seek your you. blessings, please. We need your blessings, Maharaj, all of us. Please, bless us, Maharaj. This remains sincere. You'll, 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 you'll be per, you'll Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Nina Prabhuji Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. I think Maharaj just took a short break. He'll be right back. There he is. Back. Okay. Maharaj, we have a question on the chat. Shukakar Prabhuji, I think you are, if you could kindly mute yourself. Thank you. So we have a question in the chat, Maharaj. It says, uh, from, from Radha Jyoti Mataji, she says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, how to deepen the faith so that chanting will be improved in quality on everyday basis? So how do we deepen our faith? Well, by reading the books, hearing from the great souls, and associating with devotees in the mood of serving devotees. And Sadhu Sangha and Vaishnav Seva, they go together, of course, is one of the emphasis at Mah Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He, he made three things, his principles, three things that he made was the main part of his uh, preaching program. Namruchi, developing a taste from chanting. Vaishnav Seva, associating with and serving Vaishnavas. And Jiva Doya, giving this mercy to others, the conditioned souls. So these first two are pretty much intertwined. Um, if we're not associating and serving devotees, it's really hard for us to develop our faith and our the quality of our chanting is very difficult. We remain theoretical devotees. We have to really move into that area of association and service of Vaishnavas. This is a <clears throat> this is a society that Prabhupada said this is a spiritual family. I've created this spiritual family. And we're all working together as one unit to go back home, back to Godhead. And we're associating with and assisting each other in that same goal. So you can't minimize or even uh, uh, reduce the importance 
of Vaishnav Seva serving Vaishnavas. Maharaj. Look, for the, look for the opportunity to serve the devotees. Maharaj, uh, Radha Madhaji has a follow-up question. So she says, respected Maharaji, my question to you there, there are limitations to services that I want to do and then I feel rejected. What my attitude should be to serve than thinking about plan that fails? Why should you feel rejected? If you want to serve, oh. Krishna will always fulfill your desire in one point or another. You can always serve if you have that desire. Sometimes the way you want to serve... Comes here, boy. Uh, Vishwanath Prabhu, that's a closure. Um, yes, maybe... Our desire to serve in a certain way is being blocked or certain. We can always serve in another way, but you can always do some service. Services, you have to just look for the opportunity. That's all. If we're if we're just selective, I'm going to, only going to serve in this one way, and if I don't get that service, I'm not serving. Then you might find yourself finding it difficult to do service. Depends on where you are. Sometimes you have opportunities for all all kinds of service, and other times there is it's limited according to the what is the need within that particular area. But there's one thing you can always do: you can always chat, you can always read, you can always uh, speak to others about Krishna consciousness. Well, that's that's service. Thank you, Maharaj. We have a very interesting question um, from uh, from a devotee calling himself or herself as a fallen soul. And I resonate with this question, Maharaj. He says, Dandavat Pranam Maharaj, when we try to do devotion at our peak, um, at our peak of our limit, then there is a, there is, mind get distressed what to do. So I think if I understand correctly, what the devotee is trying to say, whenever the devotion is at its peak on we, or we think we are going very strongly, we are almost there, the distress, something happens and it shatters. I, I don't know if I was able to interpret it correctly. Otherwise, you can just write a few more lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, devotion yes, that's the right way. Yeah. yeah, devotional service should be done in a clear consciousness, thinking about exactly how to serve, using your intelligence to offer that service with devotion to the Lord. But if you, if your intensification of your consciousness and you're in, you're somewhat mixing in the mode of passion with your devotional service, uh, that means you are trying to get some Result from your devotional service. You're trying to get some kind of, re, uh, yeah, some results according to your endeavor in devotional service. So that's in, that's devotional service in the mode of passion. The desire to serve with a particular res desired result based on your activities. So that way you can also burn out a little bit. We have to serve for the sake of service and offer the service in, in a way that is that is uh, pleasing to Krishna, to the devotees, to the spiritual master. Enjoy the service. Don't worry about the results. <laughs> the results will come by way of Krishna's arrangement. Is it possible, Maharaj, when um, a devotee is thinking he's doing the service with all pure intention and everything is going great, Maya can capture the mind and distress can happen and take him away to yeah. 
You start thinking I'm doing good. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Probably they did not. That that means you think you're the doer. Mm. <clears throat> you're 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 working on the mercy of the opportunity for service. So be grateful for the service. Never think that, well, I'm doing good. <clears throat> as soon as you start <laughs> you're doing good, Krishna will say, okay, you think you're the doer. Well, <laughs> you're not the doer. You're just part of the process. It mentions that there are six factors of action, five factors of action, and you're just one of the five. The mercy of the Lord is one of the factors. Don't worry about doing good or not doing good. Just <laughs> try to serve. That's all. <laughs> Do your best to serve. Sometimes, Maharaj, it feels like only Krishna's mercy is the only factor. Everything, nothing else matters. I mean, like there is no guarantee, no much how much we try, how much we do, how much we think we try, we do. Nothing matters. It's only his mercy. Well, things do matter in the sense that if you put the right ingredients. Yeah, in it the, should work. <laughs> you'll, you'll bring about the mercy of the Lord. Serve for the sake of serving, though not considering happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, heat and cold, gain and loss. Just serve for the sake of service. You want to offer something to someone, just think about how to make it as nice as you can. That's service. It's for them. You're the instrument. But you benefit because you're connecting with the higher energy. But if you're trying to get something from the service, then you might be disappointed and you may also get discouraged and quit <laughs> when you don't get what you want. Very good point, Maharaj, especially at this generation where everybody wants everything instantaneously. Thank you, Maharaj. This is just like I'm giving a class now and I want you all to benefit from but some of you will, some of you won't. Some of you will forget everything. Some of you will, will uh, you know, hey, what can I do? All I can do is try to serve. That's all. I can't make you understand what I want you to understand. I simply try my best to present it. That's all. And if you don't understand, I don't say, ah, oh, they didn't get it, you know. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati used to say, preach, and if nobody comes, preach to the four walls. Because we have to preach anyway. <laughs> so whether there's anybody there or not, simply it's our, it's our benefit that we preach and it pleases Krishna. Maharaj, you rightly said, we all understand. The problem is, even though we understand, we forget to apply it at every moment. That's the <clears throat> challenge. So I think we, we have a question from Vrishbha Prabhuji, and he's saying, Gurudev, what's the difference between duplicity and trying not to act on our bad habits and reactions to anarthas? Sometimes devotees ask me not to try to be humble, to pretend, but if I would react, it feels natural, I would do many unnecessary offenses. Please I'm not give sure I got the last part of the question. So the first part of the question is, Maharaj, what he's saying, What's the difference between duplicity and trying not to act on the bad habits? Obviously, we have collected so many bad habits from so many lives. How is there a difference? Because probably the mind wants to do it and we are not acting upon it. I mean, and then, or is it reactions to anartha? And then he says, sometimes devotees ask me to Prabhu to try not, uh, me not to try to be humble. So to pretend. But if I would react as I would react as feels natural, I would do many unnecessary offenses. Well, you have, if, you're gonna be, you're gonna, if you want to be humble, you have to practice being humble too. 
So practicing the right thing leads to the right goal. Humility <clears throat> is natural and it's a part of bhakti. Uh, these other qualities of duplicity and nothing, they have nothing to do with the soul. They're based, based on the mind. So if we act uh, on, you know, in other words, if you're, even if you're not kind, but you know you should be kind, but you don't feel like being kind, be kind anyway, because you know it's right. Even if you're not feeling humble and you, you know, you're not inclined to that because of the feeling, act humble anyway, because it's right. It'll lead to that quality developing if you practice, you have to practice devotional service. You have to practice being humble. You have to practice being tolerant. You have to practice being uh, not affected by happiness and distress. You have to practice these things. When you get when you get good at practicing, it starts to take root in the soul, and it awakens in the, in, in, within the mind. Then it becomes natural. And then it's not anymore a, a principle of of practice. It becomes part of your character. Mm -hmm. It's like fake it till you make it. Let's at least try to be always good and do the right thing until it becomes our natural habit. Yeah, you'll make it if you continue to practice. Yep. And chant the holy names at the same time. You can't <laughs> neglect chanting. Chanting is the essence of all all success in our practice. Thank you, Maharaj. We have a very sweet question from Hemi Mataji. She's saying, how to make up for lost time for someone who takes to devotional service later in life? Is this even possible? Then just begin where you are right now. <laughs> what can you say? Whatever's gone is gone. <laughs> just start right now. I was in I was in one country and I was giving a lecture to a large group of people. I didn't know anybody there. <laughs> and one man who was in Poland and he was uh, at the end of my class, he started very <clears throat> uh, emotionally starting to ask, speaking in Polish language. And I can almost understand what he was trying to say, although I didn't know any anything about Poland, Polish. I can understand he was feeling that he had wasted his whole life, and now he was feeling bad about that. When the devotees translated it, then I understood, and I said, don't worry, whatever is gone is gone. Start now. It's not like it's too late. As soon as you get, as soon as as soon as you get the wake up call, begin. <laughs> don't don't think, well, I'm too old. I wasted it. Yes, <clears throat> we might, <clears throat> you might have wasted some life. You know, we might regret that race, but don't let that regret hang over your mind in such a way that it blocks you from actually getting uh, becoming serious. It's never too late. Thank you, Maharaj. Wonderful questions, brilliant answers. Devotees, we still have Maharaj here. Feel yeah. free to unmute yourself, raise your hand, go ahead and ask your questions. Turn your videos on so Maharaj can glance at you and bless you. Uh, I have about maybe five to ten more minutes the most, and then okay. so we can take one or two more questions. Okay, there you go. I, unfortunately, I have another engagement right now. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Everybody is thanking you, Maharaj, on the chant for um, responding so wonderfully and taking tons of questions today. So, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for the opportunity. It's always nice to be on the group here. It's there's always. 
so many devotees come on. We have we had up to sixty eight devotees came on today. That was nice. That was a very large amount. <laughs> Usually I speak to about twenty twenty five. <laughs> today we had sixty eight. <laughs> One last question from uh, Shishupal. Sorry, Sushi. Sushilpa. Sushilpa, yeah. Sushilpa Mataji, please go ahead. I am so sorry. No <laughs> problem, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji, thank you for your opportunity. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, Dhanwat Pranam. Um, Maharaj, my question, um, the congregation is growing uh, and uh, um, there would be a lot of scope to to spend time with uh, new devotees who are who are at least thinking about Krishna, not aspiring, but thinking that stage. And we get to spend much time with them. At, and sometimes, um, you know, we, we have to shift gears and... and um, you know, there, there would be a conflict between uh, talk, taking, giving more time to them. Parallelly, um, I have to do my own uh, sadhana, um, or there would be a Bhagavatam class which I have to attend, which I would be missing. You know, so those kind of conflicts. So, um, would cutting off the conversation, not rudely, but slowly cutting off the conversation for that day and then continuing with my sadhana, would that be categorized as a, an aparada? Um, what, what would you suggest, Maharaj? Thank you so if you, much. If you want to tell somebody something that apparently may be unpleasant to them, but it's necessary, speak it sweetly. <laughs> with great concern and care and maybe even apologies. It's not that you have to go along with everything that everyone wants you to go along with. Sometimes, like right now, I have to go. So there's people waiting for me. I have to, oh, I can't stay any longer. So in the same way, just be nice about it. Apologize, say, I have to, uh, I have other responsibilities. Um, maybe net, and we can make some plan to continue our our discussion at another time. You know, it's just basic etiquette and uh, proper respect for uh, others. That's all. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for wonderful questions. Devotees will go ahead and end our call. Let's go ahead and offer our obeisances to His Holiness. Ban Chakal Patirubhyasya, Kripas and Thukavacha, Patita Nam Pavani Pyo, Vaishnavi Pyo, Namo, 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 Namo,